Welcome guys to the board game review for Disney Villainous, the two to six player game of villainy and schemes where you can choose up to one character of the six different choices in the Disney universe. Play as Ursula, the Queen of Hearts, or Captain Hook. Perhaps you're going to be Jafar, or of course if you'd like Prince John. And these characters are all going to fight against each other and of course the heroes, attempting to gain their victory condition. Some of them are going to be instant victory conditions, while others will be at the start of your turn. Whether you're going to be uh, Maleficent trying to curse each of the different locations on your board and having them all cursed at the start of your turn, or you could be Jafar gaining entrance to the Cave of Wonders and the Lamp and control of the Genie, or you could be the Queen of Hearts and have a Wicket in each of the different locations so that you can play croquet and make your perfect shot. Will you be able to succeed as one of these Disney villains? Find out in the game Villainous. Uh, we'll take a look at how to set the game up, how to play, and of course my review. Beginning step for the game is fairly easy. First, go ahead and select this little tub where you're going to be placing all the power tokens inside and within reach of all players. Then, give each player a player board from their chosen villain. Each of these boards is going to come with one of these tokens, and you can place your character token on the first location, the first square, on your player board that folds out. Then, you'll take your main deck of cards that is going to be in your color and place it on the left-hand side of your player board. Finalized by the Fate deck. Make sure they're both shuffled, and this one here is placed on the right side. Each player is going to get some player actions, which is denoted here. These are the action symbols that you can take when you move your character from location to location. Place that within reach, and so that you can see it whenever you need it. And of course, your villain guide. Each villain in this game is different, has unique conditions, and a unique fate and main deck, as well as the game board. So having this to explain what your hero, or I should say villain, does is going to be interesting. And make sure that you have it so that if you need it, the specific cards are available for you to understand. After that, based on turn order, each player is going to get a number of power, followed by the next player getting more power. Thusly, the first player will get no power, whereas the second will get one, and third will get two, and fourth can get two as well. Then, you're basically ready to begin the game. You have your player board, your token, and your two decks, as well as your references. Pretty simple, right? Playing the game is as simple as setting it up. The first thing you do on your turn is you make sure that you start with four cards in hand. Once you have your four cards, you will take your villain and place it on any available location. You may not place your villain on the same location it was already currently at, or on any location that is locked. So in this case, with the Queen of Hearts, I can move her to the Hedge Maze, Tolgui Wood, or the White Rabbit's House. And when I place her, I may then enact any of the action symbols present on the location. If action symbols are covered up, you may not utilize those spaces. So make sure that you only activate the ones that are available to you. If you can remove any of those cards blocking your action spaces before the end of your turn, you may then use those action spaces that were previously covered up. The options in the game are as follows. Gaining power. Power is used in order to play cards from your hand. Playing a card. Cards from your hand can be played. Depending on what they are, they will go to the bottom of your board or to your discard pile. Items allies are going to go to the bottom, which are going to help you defeat heroes. And any of the action cards or effect cards will go to your discard pile after enacting the effect. Then you can choose to activate. Activating is if there are any cards on your field that have an activate, you pay the cost and of course have the activate action button and you're able to do whatever it says. In my case, I have card guards. Card guards can turn into wickets and wickets are what I need to win the game. In order for me to win the game as the Queen of Hearts, I have to have four wickets on the board, one in each location, and I need to take a shot. So utilizing their ability, uh, their specific activate power, by paying one power and having to activate, I can turn these guys over and convert them. The next thing I can do is Fate. Fate is going to allow me to draw a card, a Fate card, from any of the other villains' uh, decks. And you'll draw two of them, actually. And you will choose one and place one in any of the four locations available. Once you've placed that card, you'll discard the previous card and enact any effects. If they're heroes, you'll simply read what they say and do what they say. These are going to block spaces of your opponent's locations, and they can enact some other nasty deeds uh, to your opponents as well. Fake cards are only to hinder your opponents, and you're only going to be able to choose your opponent's decks, and the opponent that you choose, that deck, is where it's going to go, on that location, not to somebody else's. The next thing you can do is move an item or an ally. In the game, when you place down allies onto your board in your specific locations, you can actually move them with this action. You can go ahead and move one to one, 
space and then into adjacent space or a farther space. It doesn't matter where you place them. And there's reasons for doing so, usually to involve fighting another hero or if you have a specific victory condition. You can move a hero as well. If you have that specific action, you can go ahead and move one of these heroes from one space to another so that it's easier to defeat them. You can vanquish heroes. If you have a hero in your location and you have allies there, you will check to see your allies' powers combined versus the hero's powers combined. And if you have more, you are able to defeat them. You can remove your five to defeat a five or a four hero, putting that into the discard fate deck and your allies into your discard pile. And finally, discarding cards. It's exactly as it sounds. You choose any number of cards from your hand and you discard that. And then at the end of your turn, when you're fully complete and fully done, you'll draw back up to four cards. And those are the main actions in the entire game. So when I move to this space here, there are four spaces available. In this case, I can play two cards. I can gain three power. So I would take a certain number of power, take through three power. And I could also activate a card. So one, I would play this heart guard for two. Then I could go ahead and if I wanted to, play a spear for one, and that item is going to equip to a card guard, making him a little stronger. And finally, I can go ahead and activate the card guard heart by spending an action point, utilizing the action symbol, and turning it to the side. And then that would end my turn. I would go ahead and draw back up to four cards, and it would be the next player's turn. And this would just simply rinse and repeat. And it would continue by having the next player move their villain after having four cards in hand, then utilizing every action circle on the space they move to, and then drawing back up to four cards. And this will continue until one of the players, or I should say villains, is able to meet their objective, whether it be to gain the lamp and the genie at the Cave of Wonders, or to have a wicket in each of your locations and take the shot that you need, or whether it be to gain King's, King Triton's uh, trident, as well as, of course, the crown if you're Ursula. And there's a variety of other win conditions as well in the game Villainous. But that's pretty much how the game goes. It's really quite simple. Move, take the actions, draw back up to four, and pass. So I'm a bit behind on the party, and this game has been out for a while, and I just picked it up recently, and I decided I wanted to cover it because I enjoyed this game quite profusely. Now, most people I know have enjoyed this game quite profusely. This is out in Target and Walmart and all kinds of places, and uh, for good reason, too. This is a lot of fun. Each of the different villains has their own unique decks, their own unique fake decks, which you'll have to deal with all of the heroes as you play out your minion allies. All of the characters are represented by the original Disney cartoons, which in my opinion just makes it so much better. The Alice in Wonderland actually has all of the Alice characters and <laughs> they're all, they're all uh, beautifully illustrated on these cards here. They represent the different allies and items and effects that can take place in the game, as well as of course from your favorite films. And of course you'll be able to choose any of these different um, uh, options here and all of these options are great from the base game itself. I know that there are expansions. I haven't tried those I've just played this one here, but what I can say about this one is they are so unique Each of these different player boards functions differently the characters powers and abilities from the cards that you draw is unique And even the win condition how you succeed in the game and it always comes really tight That's what I really enjoyed about this game uh, villainous is a ton of fun. For those of you who are Disney fans, this is an instant pickup. And for those of you who like a, I would say mid to light to strategies type game where you're all competitive against each other, then this is gonna be a fun one for you as well. I wasn't sure what to expect with this one here, if there was a lot of hype over it for no reason or if this deserved all the praise it got. And yeah, it does. Uh, there are a few little nitpicks I have here and there about some of the characters being easier than other characters. The Queen of Hearts is a little bit more challenging than most because even when you get your victory condition all set up and ready, you can still fail to make that objective. And then you might have to wait quite a while in order for you to be able to try to win again. But she has the ability to instantly win as opposed to the other characters or a lot of the other characters, which just involve you to gather certain items in certain areas at certain times and have them available to you at the beginning of your next turn, which is a challenge in and of itself. So I'm not going to fault it too much on that, but it doesn't feel super great when you think you're going to win and all of a sudden you lose and now you're not going to be able to win for quite some time. That's <laughs> just how it goes, I suppose, though. The quality of the game is excellent. These pieces here, these plastic bits are 
really, really nice. The different pieces for that represent all the different uh, Disney villains is super cool. I love how they chose to do that, and it feels good to move these markers around on the game board uh, to your favorite locations in these Disney movies in order to enact your evil schemes, your sinister plots and plans, and that's super unique and interesting. Um, this game feels like some other games I've played before, but it feels a little bit lighter than those as far as how you move your piece. But based on what actions you have to choose from, where you want to go, and the cards you have available to you, that changes the strategy completely. I think this game is going to be a game that lasts for a long time and on your game shelf. I don't see people getting rid of this game anytime soon. I feel like if you haven't played this game, this is one of those games that uh, once you play it, you'll go, oh, this is why the game was so popular and this is why I want to keep this game. So yeah, overall quality, the artwork, the, the, the solid original classic Disney art choices they made as opposed to some of the other uh, different like live actions they could have done. Uh, just all around good choices, uh, smart quality, in production. This is by far my favorite Ravensburger, uh, Ravensburger game. I, I really, really, really enjoyed Villainous and uh, for good reason. So do a lot of other people. If you want to take a look, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up the game Villainous uh, by Disney if you would like. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Disney Villainous. If you'd like to take a look at the game, there's a link down below like I said. You can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you've seen more than one of our videos here and you are going to continue to see more videos and we've earned your subscription, please consider doing so. We have a live stream on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games just like this one and in fact, we did play this one. You can also go ahead and check out our stream on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we sell games similar to this game, but not this game. This game I'm keeping as I just got it. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to being villainous with you next time.